is our primary responsibility is the Plymouth County uh, Correctional Facility. Uh, when I left last night, our population count was like 1,476 inmates. So if something happens inside the correctional facility, that's when our tactical response team will get activated and we will come in and deal with whatever disturbance is going on inside the correctional facility. The first thing we want to do is isolate and contain. On, on each shift, every, um, every single day, we have what we call a CERT team, a Correctional Emergency Response Team. There's 12 members per shift to that team. And they're what, what their responsibilities are is they go in, they respond to any emergency inside the correction facility. People think that the tactical response team, once we get activated, we want to go in with the guns ablazing. That's not the case at all. Once, once there is a critical incident, we have a riot situation, we are able to establish contact and a good rapport with the inmate, the communication, then I'm able to take a little bit more time to bring everything in to see what type of tactical plan we're going to set up. Um, we might not have to use um, the different type of 12-gauge, uh, the multi-launcher, pepper ball. Uh, we might be able just to go in with like an OC gas. If the inmates do not have edge weapons, room sticks, mop handles, stuff like that, then we can just go in and gas them. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell the inmate what we want them to do. Verbal command and letting the inmate know what they need to do is a key factor. If we just go in and get online and not tell the inmate what to do, they don't know what to do, so it's, it's just chaos. We go in with bullhorns, myself, the assistant commanders, who's ever talking to the inmates. We have to have good verbal communication with the inmates to let them know what we want them to do. Return to your cells or, you know, get on the, um, lay on the floor in a prone position, stuff like this. So if we don't tell them what we want them to do, then it's just chaotic. And in a riot situation, <coughs> it's noisy as hell. It's, you know, it's hard for us as TAC members to hear with our helmets on, with our earpieces, giving verbal commands, what type of formation. So it's really chaotic. So if we can go in and, and establish good communication right away, it, believe it or not, it brings the noise level down. This right here is a 40 millimeter, and this right here is on. Uh, we have to go through the ATF to purchase this weapon right here because it has a rifle, a rifle barrel. It has a twist to it. So when that bean bag is deployed, it's like being deployed from the 12 gauge shotgun. It has a twist. There's smooth bore cylinders, like a 37 millimeter gas gun. It's smooth bore, so when the round comes out, it comes out straight. There's no twist to it. But this, this weapon right here has a twist. The reason why it has a twist is we want the kinetic energy in the feet per second for when, it, when the round strikes the inmate, it just gives it that more get up and go. In a riot, in a riot situation, we'll use a 12-gauge um, shotgun. This is a, a police model. This is the Remington 870 standard police shotgun. But what we did is we took the original stock off and put on an adjustable because we have some people, we have a dedicated weapons team on the tactical response team. And some of the correctional staff, when we have our vest on, you know, if the stock is pulled, if it's a standard stock, they really can't get a good, a good sight picture. So what we did is we went and we switched it up so even with our vest on, you can still get that good sight picture, bring it up to where it needs to be, and uh, go from there. But this is a great tool, and inside a correctional facility, uh, once again, for a single subject, we'll use what we call a, a um, super sock, beanbag round. What this is, it's just a, um, <clears throat> it's like a um, nylon top <coughs> filled with buckshot, number nine buckshot. <clears throat> what we teach is a six round burst of pepper ball which is the red, the red ball is the actual pepper ball. What it is, is a 68 caliber round ball filled with uh, pepper, basically pepper dust. And what it's made to do is, 
it scored 360 degrees in that hard plastic ball. But when it makes contact with the inmate, it bursts and throws pepper dust 360 degrees. We basically can contaminate the inmate with the OC dust. This is um, this weapon right here is called the SA200. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, made the company that produces these around San Diego, California, is called JCOR Corporation. And all this is is a Pittman pep, uh, paintball gun that's been developed for law enforcement. And the only difference is that this, this weapon right here is calibrated at 380 feet per second. An average paintball gun is only calibrated at 200, between 260 to 280. 